everyone and welcome back to Art à la carte. Today I am doing a speed drawing study of some forget-me-nots, which are one of my favorite flowers. These, there are these delicate little blue flowers with a really bright, vibrant yellow center. And when I was growing up that we had them everywhere, I kind of think people thought they were weeds, but I absolutely have always adored them and so I decided to draw some. Sometimes when I'm kind of inspired to do a larger piece, a larger painting, and has a lot of different elements in it, if I'm not really comfortable with some of the elements, I'll do a up-close study, and that's what happened with these flowers. A couple quick tips for drawing forget-me-nots. I start off with a basic circle shape that kind of blocks in the full flower shape. Then I find where the center of the flower is, which depending on what, what direction the flower is looking the center of the flower may not be the center of the circle. I would recommend looking at different photographs or looking at the real flower if you can. The forget-me-not has five petals and they're and they're similar to the cherry tree blossom which are a really nice kind of big fat teardrop shape. Then if you take a closer look in the center of the forget-me-not you're going to find of course the goldish yellow circle but just on the outside of that, leading up into the petals, you'll find this almost white star shape, which was really pretty. And I hadn't really noticed it until I actually did the study of this flower. coloring this picture I went with my Copic markers. I started off with my lightest shades first. I really wanted that bright baby blue color so I went so I think I started off with a B000 and then went into a B01 and then after that went in with various different shades of darker tones. You may notice that some of the flowers are shaded differently with different colors and that's because as I'm creating this piece I am testing out different methods to figure out which one works the best. Some of the flowers I'm going to be shading with a deeper, richer blue and others more of a desaturated, more violet gray blue to kind of figure out which one I liked the best. After I get the base shadows blocked in, then I'm going to go back over with some color pencils to add in some really fine details in the shadowing and highlighting. lot of flower pictures before or pieces that are just dedicated to studies of flowers. So I'm finding this really kind of fun. If you have a flower that you would like to see 
me do a study on. Leave that in the comment section below and who knows, I might try to do that. I'm kind of excited about doing a whole bunch of flower studies like this. Another thing that I have been working on in the past few drawings that I've done and something that you'll probably see in upcoming future videos is that I'm pushing myself in my contrast. I have a relatively okay knowledge of contrast and I think I use it mediumly well but as I look at my pictures I notice that every picture has a soft shadow it doesn't have harsh shadows on any of my faces or things like that and it's something that I kind of found that my art has lacking that can be a tough thing about being a self-taught artist. If you have an instructor or teacher, they can look at your work and say, okay, well, your proportioning is off. So to fix it, you're going to do this, 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 and this, and these kind of exercise and practice this. As a self-taught artist, you have to look at your picture and go, what's wrong with it? And figure it out. And then when you do, sometimes that is enough to fix it and, and you, you, know, you notice it so you can fix it the next time. But other times it's not so instant that you know how to implement that in art. And I'm finding that harsh contrast is something that I'm having a hard time implementing into my art. So I believe, so I think I'm going to be doing a focused study on that as well coming up. Um, so if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing, it won't be a video on how to do this. It'll be a more of a video of how I'm trying to figure this out. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in seeing, again, let me know in the comments section below. A couple of you guys on Instagram asked me how I did the background to this. So pretty much the whole picture is done with Copic markers, except for some color pencils to add in some shadows and highlights to the flowers. But the background is all about layering in your colors. I start off with my lightest tones first. So I start off with a bright yellow and then move into a kind of a mustardy orangish color and then into my lighter shades of brown and then overlaying that darker and darker and darker until I finally get into the green. And a trick with layering colors or blending them is to lay in your light and then go on with a slighter darker color and then go back with your lighter shade and blend those two together. And it can take a lot of time, but just keep working at it. After I got done, I felt it was too bright. So I went back over with a very desaturated light brown. I think it was my E71 and went over the whole piece and it just kind of took a little bit of the brightness out. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming videos that you'd like to see let me know in the comment section below if you're brand new to this channel hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos and if you'd like to see more art a la carte videos check out these ones here so until next time god bless you guys and we'll see you later Bye bye